morning. This is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. Sitting in front of my growing tiny house on wheels. It's coming together. Got some of the sheathing on. I'll show you some of the details in the daylight a little bit later here. Um, a lot of stuff. There's a lot of questions going on. I'm going to try to answer them all today on video because there was, uh, there was a lot I couldn't show. We were really working fast and heavy here and I if you take a what do we work 10 hour days I was working 16 to 18 hour days last week and John was here Saturday for 10 hours and during the weekdays he can only be here for like six seven hours so um, you know it's hard to show everything on video in that time period in just a short video clip so you know we're I'll try to catch up and answer all the questions on video. I've got literally like well over a thousand comments on the last couple videos alone together, so uh, it's going to be way too much for me to really cover and, and type them all. So please be patient and understand I can't get to all the comments this time around. I usually try, but that's not possible right now. Um, sitting here having my morning coffee, uh, my new table and chair set. They match well, by the way. So. Anyway, there's Big Mouth in the background. Always got to get his word in. Every time I talk, he's got to get in there and be part of the video. But, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. It's, uh, and it didn't rain. Uh, actually, um, I know a lot of you are not Bible believing. Some of you may be. So, you know, just uh, take this as you like. But uh, when Jesus commanded the weather, and he can control the weather. Well, uh, yesterday was supposed to rain, and there was a big, heavy storm on the map just in front of my my uh, this area, and it was supposed to rain. It was scheduled to rain hard, and I have open walls and an open roof, so I was really praying hard all day. A lot of people were praying, and the storm went below. The, uh, the whole storm just went below. And we had sunny skies all day yesterday. Well, mostly sunny, partly cloudy. So I think that was definitely a blessing because otherwise this would have been a bathtub. And I was really worried because the reason I'm so concerned, a lot of people don't get yet, what, I, what I'm so concerned about is the, the flooring under here is a solid sealed container with the aluminum flashing down below and I sealed it off completely. If water got inside the floor and seeped in, I would have literally a water tank rather than a house. It wouldn't be a boat, it wouldn't be a house, it would be a tank of water. Uh, I guess I would have a few thousand gallons of rainwater collection, you know. Um, for what I've invested so far, I think it would be about the same cost as a, uh, a, uh, what do you call those water tanks that you buy and put in the ground? I guess it's the same price anyway, so I'd have that big water tank. So, I guess that would work out in the end. Just put a hose in it and drink. But anyway, I'd like to prefer I prefer not to have that because I do have a 275 gallon water tank. So I'm trying to keep the rain off the floors so it doesn't get down inside and fill up. So, well let me show you around here a little bit around what I've done and what I didn't show on camera and try to explain some of the missing parts and details and uh, hopefully uh, take care of some of your fears. Pause the camera and take off the tripod. Well, first thing I want to show is uh, John did an amazing job on the sheathing. At first I thought he was really taking a lot of time cutting because these are tongue and groove. And the problem is tongue and groove is 47 and a half inches and the tongue was ripped to shreds on these. Now these are stained, I was trying to show you the other day. These have been stained, that's why they look so brown. These are second hand, but they're in pretty decent shape, I have to say. And this is the, the sheathing is what I got paid for doing the lumber yard job. And it's certainly material for my tiny house, so I'm, I, it's definitely a blessing. I'm happy I have it. So I put the clean side in because I didn't want any chemicals in the house. And so I've got the clean side of the wood on the inside and the stained side out and yeah not that it makes a lot of difference but to me every little bit helps 
So yeah, John did a really nice job shaving those ends off and making super tight square corners on this. Uh, speaking of square corners and leveling, okay, let's get to that. Although, again, I, I wasn't able to show everything. We did a lot of work out here that I couldn't show on camera. There's just so much going on. So I hope you understand, I can't show the whole picture. But I've got, uh, this jack I, I have to find a crank for, but I've got a jack here, I've got a jack here, I've got blocks here. All right, I've got blocks here. I've got blocks and a jack here. I've got blocks and shims here. I've got blocks and shims here. I've got a jack on blocks here. I've got another one I'm working on. Oh, sorry, no, that's the uh, stopping the thing from moving. Jack on blocks here. Oh, that's military. There's a big jack going over. Uh, like I said, I was working on this one here, and I never could get that jack to crank. And I'm going to be putting another set of blocks here and another set of blocks here. I have to get the blocks, and I'll be shimming that up. And again, over here is the same thing. I'll have two more sets of blocks under the the house on this side. So I'll have five points of contact under each side of the house holding up the floor joist and supporting the weight of the walls on the ground. So I hope that really takes out your fears. The trailer is jacked and leveled and the house is jacked and leveled. I mean not jacked but I mean blocked and leveled. We ran around with this level that I have again and again and again and again and round and round and round. Um, more times than I can, can say. Every piece of wood that we tacked on, well, we once we put the walls up, we held a level and tried to get it straight. Now, we didn't just wood bows and wood bins, so we didn't just hold the level in one spot and say, oh, good happiness, it works. No, we tried here, we tried here, we tried here. When we leveled the floor of the trailer, we leveled, we, we put the level on multiple points, because yes, my level is too small. But yes, when you go here, 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 and here, you're pretty sure you got a level when, when the whole thing, everywhere you check it, is level. Same here. You can check it at a few points. You can check it on the tongue. You check it on the back bumper. And with every single board we put in, once the walls were up and level, which will come to bring me to another point about the windows, each board we tacked on, I made sure it was level. Everything I did, every cut I made in the... In the uh, the, the studs, I made sure they were level before, again, you make sure the overall thing is still level, and then you check your level when you're putting this, uh, tacking this board in place. Like when we cut that stud to put in the window, I made sure it was level before attaching it to the header. Now, why did we put the windows in later? Well, we didn't have the dimensions for all the windows. And the 24 inches where I put them, and where I put, well, I didn't have these dimensions, okay, for the big windows. And, because I don't have the windows. I was, I'm getting them for free from a friend. And when we, I had John here to help framing, we had to get this stuff together. Because he's only got limited hours to help out. So, I had to use his, you know, I had to, I had to use the time while he was here. And get as much done as we could. And I could always frame the windows later alone. So I figured, you know, that's a calculated thing. I can do it later. I can do it myself. And that's what we did. And later we got, the next day we got the dimensions for the windows. And so we started cutting them in. So then the, uh, the little windows, I'll be framing them in alone later. I, I still, see here's another thing. I know I'm going to have windows here. But until I get up in the loft and I'm standing there and I'm looking... Because this was all, the, the loft I adjusted the height, which changed my drawings, okay? When I changed the height of the loft, it changed where everything falls in place here. So once I get upstairs, and I'm looking around later on today, I'm going to measure. I don't want the window sitting on the floor, and I don't want it up on the ceiling. So I'm going to measure where things will be sitting, and then I'll be able to place my 24-inch windows in these two end walls. So that's another reason I didn't do them yet. And that's something I can do later on. That's something you can always add in later. Now, the bathroom. Why didn't I put the bathroom windows in? Well, I don't have a shower yet. And it's hard to... See, everything I'm doing is on a budget. Everything I'm doing is either secondhand or free 
or scrounged around, gathered up, salvaged, whatever. I've got, a, I've got a bathroom sink, I've got a kitchen sink, I've got a stove. Um, I don't have a shower yet, and I'm going to need a very expensive composting toilet to comply with New York law. I don't know when and how I'm going to get that, but that's going in the corner. That's easy enough. The shower, I have to figure out exactly where that's going to go and how big it is and how it's going to go in. So for now, I left a gap in my bedroom loft so that I can put the shower in later. I think what I'm going to do is I kept this bathtub out here. I never put it away. Reason is I think in the end that's what I'm going to end up using. That bathtub from the old camper. It's clean and uh, there's nothing wrong with it. So I think I'll actually have, it's like a half bath and that'll probably go in here. And once I get the sheathing up halfway and I get inside and I can start making measurements of the bathroom. Well actually once the roof is on because then I can take off the tarp. I'll show you. I'll, come, I'll show you the bathtub that I built and my my swimming pool tarp. I'll show you that in detail later. In case it rains, I put it in there. Once I get the roof on and I can go inside and I can take off the tarp and start playing around on the floor, I'll put the bathtub in place and then I'll be able to figure where's my my bathroom sink, where's the vanity gonna go, and then where's the uh, or what do you call it, the medicine cabinet, and then where's the toilet gonna be, and where's the bathroom window gonna be. So I'll frame that in then later. I made a draining bathtub out of my my tiny house. Remember I said it, it'll be a container if water gets under the subfloor. So what I did is stapled up the tarp all the way around and then formed a drain down over the wheel wells. So basically, if it had rained on Sunday, this was my last ditch resort of keeping the house, saving it from, from destruction. And the idea was this was going to fill up and the water would run off as much as it could down out the wheel wells. I'm going to leave this tarp in place as I build today until the roof is on, just to be safe. So I think I've covered all the details and everything that was asked. Oh no! Did I cover that? The, uh, did I mention that? I don't, I don't know if I mentioned the inside corner studs. Yes, I left them out. Why? Because I didn't have the wood. Uh, we ran out of wood and I ran out of finances until the end of the month. Um, I'm going to just have to tack them in from inside. It's not the best, but I can toenail in at the top. I can toenail in at the bottom from the inside and then I'll have something to nail the inside paneling on. For those of you that don't really comprehend what I'm saying, if, let me see if there's a good example. Well, let me see if I can show it here. There's, this is the inside corner of the house, wall, or of the, uh, the wall right here. Let me bring the camera around. I don't know if I can show you like this. Here's the inside edge of the back wall, and then the wall will come this way, here. But there's nothing here to nail this wall to right now. There's nothing here. So I'm going to have to put another 2x4 in here from the top to the bottom of the whole wall in each corner, both here and here, and well, in all four corners. So it's going to cost me four more 12-foot 2x4s to get that in there. And yes, I calculated that in and intentionally left it out because I just didn't have it. And that is something I can add in later, so no harm done. Same with framing in the windows later. Sure it's more work, but you know, it can be done. So I'm going to get to work. I'm going to finish reinforcing the loft today and hope to get the, um, the rafters on and then maybe start putting on some sheathing. So let's see how it goes. All right, here's that big board I was talking about. There's my walkway, okay? And I've got this 2 by 10 by 12 footer. I wish I'd have showed myself clamping that on. That was quite a job. But uh, I'm sure I would have got mocked a lot for the struggles that I had with it. Anyway, actually, I might end up turning that around. I see this is very, very rough cut on this side. It's got a smooth side and an ugly side, but the problem is the other side is black tattooed. 
So uh, I tried to hide the tattooed side in. Oh well, some rough cut lumber is fine. I don't know about the lowest quality lumber. This is really rough stuff. I've, I've found some serious rough cut wood. Some of the reject lumber that you get on the wooden pallets is prettier than than some of the good lumber you get over there. Anyway, um, got that clamped in place and I'm going to screw it on and that's going to help strengthen the walkway and give me something to attach the handrails to on the inside. So the floor will rest down on this lip here and over the 2x4 framing and then the handrails will be attached up from there. That was an idea I had. I just thought it was pretty cool and uh, it looks really good. And I got these boards on discount because they had some serious cracks in them. Most of them are split all the way down the center and I took the best of the worst. Uh, I don't know, hopefully that won't ex get worse once I oil this. I'm going to put beeswax and oil. I'm not sure about which oil I'm looking at. Uh, I'm studying the best wood preservatives, but beeswax mixed with linseed oil or olive oil makes an amazing wood preservative for indoors. And it's all natural and green. So I'm going to screw this on all the way across. And I'll have my, my big supporting piece here. It looks good and it's, uh, it's going to do the job. And then the next thing before I start putting on, I guess I can put up the one on this side on the study because what I'll have is I'm only going to have one ladder in the house, one stairway. And since the living room I want it to be open and uninterrupted, I don't want a stairway in the living room. So probably over here by the kitchen area is where it's going to be. And so I'm really going to have to do some thinking before I put that piece on. I'll probably do that much later then, actually. Maybe even after I'm inside. But i got to really figure that out. So anyway, I'm going to screw this on. It's time for another bit. Time for another bit. Ugh. Oh, I won't even go in. Alright, so much for showing you what I'm doing. Well, I got that in there, but the uh, whole walkway still feels wobbly, so I'm not comfortable with it yet. Now I'm learning about the strength and stability of lumber. So, that piece is definitely helping here, but I have a lot more work to do if I'm going to be running back and forth on this thing. I've put in a lot more screws around the edges, tied this in here, and tied that in better with screws on the other side. Made sure I got double screws in every wall stud, securing that to the wall studs, but it's still shaky. I am going to have to put the double beam going across from the middle here to the other wall. That's going to help a lot, I think, is it's going to take a the load out of the middle of that. Over here, I'm not sure yet. Once I get that board up here, I'll, I'll get a better feel for things and see how shaky that is or if it stabilizes it any. We'll uh, get to that in a little bit here. And over here, the bathroom wall will be under that, so that'll be strong. But I won't be doing that anytime soon, so I, I don't have the lumber for that yet anyway. So I'll have to see how that goes. 
But uh, anyway, I'm getting shaky. I had a light breakfast, so I'm going to have a heavier breakfast now. I got this other board on for the loft. This was a perfect fit. I only, actually only put the clamp on there just for extra security. But this was a perfect cut. It fits wedged right in there nicely. Although, isn't that weird? Boards are not always the exact same size. I want to do the screws. That is visible. Screw this on pretty heavily. Yes, I'm using socks. I don't know if you see that or not. I'm keeping the house clean. I don't care what people say. I'm not going to rip up my tarp to shreds. Shoes will shred that tarp, which I need to remain waterproof in case it rains. another piece. It's still very flexible, but I think it'll all come together eventually once I get the uh, the sheathing on the floor, or the subfloor I should say. But there's the, I don't know what you call it, a kickboard or what do you call it at the base of a loft? It gives me a lip. I'll show you on the other side what it looks like, or from above. When you're up here in the loft, uh, you're gonna have this this slip here. I think I did show that earlier, didn't I? So that's gonna stop stuff from rolling off onto the floor and from the to the floor below and hitting people in the head or whatever. And something to attach the. Railing to. 
So I'm just going to add some more screws along and tie it into the the uh, stud and tie them into each other. Right now I'm measuring and checking this big beam that's going to cross and span the two walls. Now unfortunately I wanted to tie it in inside the rafters or inside the studs but unfortunately because the way this wall has a door on one side and a window on the other there's nothing to tie into inside that's all open framing so I'm going to put and I don't have the lumber to come all the way down right now so I'm going to put in a temporary block screw down right here and this is just a single piece propped in place right now but I'm going to have a, a temporary block screwed on right here for that to sit on and over here the same until I can afford the lumber to come all the way to the floor and that'll be a, a, a double 2x4 glued and screwed together all the way down and that'll take the support off the dead center of my loft and it'll sort of look cool because I'm going to cover it with pallet wood to give it a rustic look make it look like a rustic rough beam running across the middle of the house that was another effect that I wanted and it'll also as I said give strength to this loft so that's pretty cool and I that's another reason I raised the clearance here Let's see if you can, I can see myself on this camera um, the head clearance here that's the reason I did this so that I have space to walk under here still and of course my friends who may be visiting who uh, I have some friends a couple inches taller than me so that's important to not have uh, this too low so well I'm loving this camera I tell you with the adjustable display and everything yeah so I'm gonna tie that in and then I'm gonna be putting on boards onto the flooring temporarily onto the loft and then I'll be putting on the 2x6s for the rafters it's just ongoing one thing after another after another but uh, I'll tell you what, putting up the walls was the fastest part of the project. Doing all the fine work, that is taking time. I'm making that beam now for up above. I have liquid nails on it all the way across. idea here is to have this heavy duty 4x4 four four beam. I didn't know that they don't sell non-treated 4x4s four in the lumber yard. But now I know. So this will hold all the weight of the loft in the middle. And hopefully tie in the two walls together nicely. And for a rustic look, it's going to have pallet wood covering it on all four sides. It's going to be cool, I think.
So I've got to straighten the boards as I go along. Just sort of want to bend and flex a bit. This nice straight beam. I'll have a nice rustic cottage look when I'm done. So, let's put this up here. It's going to be a tight fit. I measured it to be really tight. I don't know if you'll be able to see that well. Fits. Hope I can get it in there. That end is really tight. I might have to drop that end a bit. Yeah, I might have to. I measured it. It's gonna go tight. Really tight. It's gonna go. Yeah, it'll go. I'm gonna have to tap it in there. Actually, let's see. I'm gonna have to go in from the side. Uh, yeah, all right, I gotta get a hammer. I'll be tapping it in there. Be back in a minute. Okay, there's my rustic beam. I should have kept the camera oiling. It tapped in nicely. I took a wooden block, scrap wood, and put it along the side here and tapped with a hammer. And then I went on the outside and tapped with a hammer on the block, and it snapped right in place. There's my rustic beam in the middle of my cottage. My off-grid tiny house on wheels. It's going to look like a nice little cottage in the woods. It's going to be so beautiful. I keep saying that word, but oh, I think you're all going to be saying it when this comes together. There is my rustic beam. It's going to take a lot of work when I'm inside to finish this up, but that's all stuff I can do in the winter. There it is. Now, let me see something here. Let me set this down. Oops, tripod leg fell apart. Let me set this down here. Alright, let me see if you can see that. I want to give some pulls on this right here and see how it shakes. See, it should hold up more solidly now. All right, I'm hanging from it. So that's certainly going to take my weight. That's what I needed. Oh, that's it. It's tied in. That's what I needed to do right there. Now my loft is supported, nice and strong. Look at that. I like the looks of it. I'm really liking this wood. When that's oiled with beeswax and oil, that's going to be so nice. I can't wait to get the uh, roof on and start working indoors now. I'm excited. This is great. All right, now I'm going to throw some boards up on the walkway here and then I'll start working on the rafters today. I might get this roof on. Well, I won't get the roof on today probably, but I might get the, uh, the I'm going to start working on the OSB at least today. 